Okay, well, I want to welcome you all to Heritage Park. This is one of the most beautiful parks in the state, I believe, and it's centered right here in Farmington Hills. It looks like a state park if you were to take the time to roam around. And right here, we're in front of one of the ponds that we take very good care of. You'll notice that it's um, environmentally protected. We have really wonderful um, natural grasses around it that we do not mow. And this is intentional because Farmington Hills is a very, very green community. Indeed, most of Oakland County is very green. Um, and, uh, and, and Rep Townsend will talk a little bit about what other communities are doing regarding fracking. But we want to come here today and talk to you about a package of bills we've introduced um, that would set some limitations and common sense transparency to uh, hydraulic fracking in the state of Michigan. So joining me today is Representative Jim Townsend. I have Water Resources Commissioner Jim Nash and Clean Water Action uh, Board, of Board of Directors member uh, Mary Brady. And we're here to talk about hydraulic fracturing, commonly called fracking. And it's a growing practice in the state, and we need to make sure that it's properly regulated. Fracking involves drilling thousands of feet below the surface of the earth pumping large amounts of chemically treated water. It's treated with surface, surficant agents, slippery agents, as well as sand and other bit particles. And it goes, when we say thousands of feet underground, we're drilling over 10,000 feet in order to release deposits of natural gas and shale oil. Over 10,000 feet. We're going two miles deep into the earth to release these natural gases. So vertical fracking, which is a different process, is not new to Michigan. We've actually been vertically fracking for oil and gas since 1952. But horizontal fracking that we're talking about now is a very, very new industry and takes fracking to a whole new level. Uh, as I said, instead of drilling simply 3,000 feet below the surface to release the agents of, of gas and oil, we're drilling over two miles in a horizontal path, no less. And instead of using a few thousand gallons of water, we're now looking at billions of gallons of water being pumped into fracking wells. This also means that more chemicals are being used and more land is being used. It's imperative that these chemicals do not infiltrate our groundwater or contaminate our soil. According to the EPA, over 930 different chemicals have been used during the fracking process. And these chemicals can pollute our air, our soil, and our drinking water. Many of these chemicals contain arsenic, cadmium, and numerous chemicals and have led to a rise in health and environmental problems in other states. We need to make sure that Michiganians and are, have access to safe drinking water. But I also want to point out our unique location in the world. We are surrounded by the Great Lakes. We are home to one-fifth of the world's fresh water system. And so we have a different obligation to take care of that water than any other state. And that's why we're calling on drilling companies to fully disclose the chemicals that they use in fracking operations. In addition, this process uses billions of gallons of water that then must be sequestered and removed from the environment permanently. Currently, oil and gas companies are exempt from state law in regards to how much water they actually withdraw from the Great Lakes or from the ground that they use. And according to DEQ, there are 52 active permits and 17 pending permits already for fracking operations in the state. Based on the data that we collected, the proposed water used for those fracking operations is 500 million gallons of water. But on top of that, and Kana Corporation has proposed 500 new wells, extracting an estimated 4 billion gallons of water. So, how much is 4 billion gallons of water? I could tell you that it's enough to drain Kent Lake twice, but that doesn't really tell you how much water that is. This is a gallon of water stacked on top of each other and laid end to end, 4 billion gallons of water in this kind of container would reach to the moon and back and have enough water bottles to spare to wrap around the earth 4.77 times. That's a lot of water.
amount of water that we will be withdrawn from the water system permanently and sequestered. But more than that, when you sequester water which doesn't compress well, two miles under the earth, you would need 10, you would need 10 monuments the size of the Washington Monument stacked on top of each other to hold that water two miles deep. And that's why we are victims to all kinds of casing fractures. And the casing fractures of the wells in Pennsylvania have led to leaching of these chemicals in the water supply. So once this water is combined with fracking materials, it's a cocktail that cannot be recycled. It's no longer available, this water, to be used and it has to be sequestered. With already historically low Great Lakes water levels, what more do we need to talk about here? Um, and so that's why um, we are here with this package of bills. And even more importantly, I want you to understand that in Kana Corporation, while we all stand for creating a domestic, reliable source of energy, and Kana plans on drilling and fracking to send that gas and oil to China. They want to export it. So given our Great Lakes heritage, we need to use the waters responsibly. I'd like to now introduce Representative Jim Townsend to fill you in a little more. <clears throat> oh, you've got mine here right here. I do oh, too. well, okay, I'll just put this away. Uh, thank you. Uh, do I need to speak into this or? Yeah. It's not on? Okay, well, then I won't. Um, well, thank you, Representative Barnett. It's a great uh, pleasure to be here today with all of you on such a beautiful day. To, uh, to really talk about a principle at stake here. And that is really the principle that we'd all, we, we really all should play by the same set of rules. You know, the idea of, uh, of accountability and fairness are really fundamentals to our system of government, to our society here in Michigan and in the United States. And what we've been allowing to happen in our state and really across the country with regard to fracking is we've been allowing an industry to play by a different set of rules to withdraw giant amounts of water, uh, pollute that water, uh, conduct drilling operations uh, of really an unprecedented scale without really any oversight of, of, of any means, of, of any particular importance. I mean, they were able to do this in the dark of night. They are able to do this without the proper accountability. And that's really what we're here, here to, to, to put a stop to. Um, there are people that would like to end fracking altogether. Uh, that's not what this package does. This package says that hydraulic fracturing ought to be something that's treated the same way uh, as many, many other industries in the, in, in the sense that if you're going to be using public assets, meaning our land and our water, if you're going to be doing things that are going to change those assets and, and in some cases pollute them probably forever, then you have to be uh, engaging. You've, you've, got to, you've got to provide a lot of disclosure. You have to uh, uh, allow the community and the state to participate with you in determining whether that's really in the interest of our community and our state and our, and our people. And uh, that's what this package does. It tries to fill a whole series of uh, uh, gaps in the law that until now have essentially allowed hydraulic fracturing to go on with very, very little oversight. And, uh, and, and really what, what Representative Barnett was talking about is, is really quite scary. Uh, the things we don't know uh, about what hydraulic fracturing really can do uh, to, our, to our land and to our water. Um, we want to make sure a number of things happen in this bill. I'm just going to trip through a few of them. We want to make sure that gas companies are transparent when it comes to the chemicals that they use. Representative Barnett talked about, what, 900, 930 chemicals that are being used. We don't know because they're not required to disclose very much about these chemicals, the combinations of these chemicals, um, uh, you know, what, what really are we dealing with here? We don't know. We must know. And our legislation would require uh, them to disclose that. We want to make sure that the public doesn't suffer adverse health uh, effects as a result of fracking operations. Michigan sh families sh should have a level of water quality that they've come to expect. And, and uh, Representative Barnett talked about our unique responsibility in that regard as, a, as the Great Lakes st state. If drilling companies pollute our water, we need to hold them accountable and our legislation would do this. Our bills take a common sense approach to fracking regulations. Again, we're not trying to end the practice. We're trying to make sure we know what we're dealing with and make sure that any fracking that does occur 
is done so in a way that takes into account the vital public assets that are, that are potentially being put at risk here. We understand that the natural gas industry is a really important part of our economy. And we all know, gosh, with almost 8.5% unemployment in this state, that we can't do things that are going to uh, harm our economy. But we don't think that that's the choice that we're facing here today. We believe that we can conduct the kinds of operations to extract uh, natural resources that are valuable to our state in such a way that we don't harm our environment and that this we don't have to choose between the environment and the economy. There are also other aspects of the economy that are equally important, agriculture and tourism. And frankly, the entire economy depends on this place being an attractive place to talented workers. Well, if we don't properly regulate fracking, we're placing all those other aspects of the economy at risk. And, uh, and in, in, the, in the end, we'll, we'll be much worse off than we are uh, today. And, and, and really, that's not worth the risk. There's a growing concern among 15 communities around our state and local governments that are beginning to weigh in on this issue. Here in Oakland County, the city of Southfield has supported more regulation of fracking, and West Bloomfield Township has enacted a, a ban and a moratorium on fracking. Um, we're taking a stand by creating a strong set of rules that will act statewide to keep the public and our water safe. We have concerns about what fracking does to our air, land, and water. And I now want to introduce our Water Resources Commissioner for Oakland County, Jim Nash, who will give us some more specifics about just what those risks are. Jim? Thanks. Thanks. I'm Jim Nash, the County Water Resources Commissioner in Oakland County. Um, used to be called the Drain Commissioner. Most people still know it as. I was a county commissioner for eight years. I was also in the past a chair of the Southeast Michigan uh, Sierra Club. Uh, I've been an activist uh, protecting the environment all my adult life. I I'll tell you real quick, my father, 105 years ago when he was 10 years old, heard Theodore Roosevelt speak. Uh, he used to tell me this quote all the time, conservation is a great moral issue for it involves a patriotic duty of uh, preserving the safety of our nation. We have to make sure, we sit on 20% of the world's fresh water, we have to make sure that we don't hurt that fresh water. We have to make sure we have a moral responsibility to protect it. Fracking has a huge impact on the environment. Um, a lot of, you'll hear often they'll say, well, there's been no case in Maine, uh, Michigan, of, of, a, of fracking uh, or oil drilling uh, harming the aquifer. That depends on how you look at it. The 99% of the wells drilled in Michigan were before these concerns existed. There were no testing of the water aquifer before the wells were drilled. You can't tell what damage was done by those wells. Um, when you look at these wells, the possibility of pollution is large. Uh, Representative uh, Barnett mentioned uh, the in Canna. They're looking at 500 wells, 4 billion gallons of water. If it's 1%, that's the average they're talking about, 1% chemicals in this. It's only 1%. It's very small. 1% of 4 billion gallons is 40 million gallons of chemicals, toxic chemicals that are going to be on our roads. They're going to be coming back in the, in the water that comes back out of the wells. Most, uh, most of the water is absorbed, displacing the gas that's released in this fracking. Anywhere from 30 to 50% comes back as, as wastewater. That has to be in deep injected into the ground in, in, a, in a separate site for permanent disposal. It's out of the hydrological cycle. But that, that 40 million gallons, that, all that, that the gallons of, of potentially highly radioactive and chemically uh, infused water has to travel on our highways to these injection wells. That has to be loaded and unloaded. The chemicals have to be loaded and unloaded. Every time you're doing this, there's a potential for an accident. If you live uh, studies out of uh, 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 Pennsylvania State University and Colorado University, have shown that if you live within a half mile of a, of a wellhead during and after the processing of the well, you have a higher incidence of respiratory diseases and cancers linked to chemical exposure. These things are real. When I have done, uh, I've done six uh, town halls across the county, been extremely well attended. The last one uh, in, in Highland Township, the, the supervisor told me that it was the most they'd ever had in that township hall, ever. Um, and everybody was very concerned about the potential harm. These, that map over there shows the sites all around Oakland County. Oakland County has 900 square miles, 1.2 million people, 13,000 people per square mile, and all these well sites are in these, uh, these areas. A lot of these well sites are in areas where people get their water either from 
directly from their own wells or from municipal wells. If there's an accident, if there's a leak into the aquifer, it could have a huge impact. We have 1,400 lakes, rivers, and streams in Oakland County. If we have an accident in one of those streams, it could be disastrous. It could harm property values for a long period downstream. Um, in, in 2010, Pennsylvania, uh, there was a, a wellhead blue, and it had a 75-foot column of water coming up out of the ground. It was poison, radioactive water that they could do nothing with until they could get that pressure down. Um, if that happened within 500 feet, which is the limit of, of uh, allowing a well near water bodies, then that could get in that that much water, that much poison water could get into the system. I just got notice from the state that uh, Indian Springs State Park has now been uh, allowed to have two well pads put in in a wetland, right in a wooded wetland. These are dangerous things to me as a, as my office is meant to protect these water resources. That's what I plan on doing. I have no power as a local authority to do that. I'm asking the, the state to do this, to allow more local authority. The people want more local authority. That's the most important thing. In, we have to know, our communities need to know what is being injected, what is being trucked in to their communities. They need to know these things. Right now, they have no power to enforce noise or light ordinances at night. These operations go for weeks at a time, 24-7. If you live nearby there, tough. Um, the, we need more local control. We need the people to understand these issues. And I congratulate and thank the uh, representatives for doing this. This is something we need to do. Um, they're not trying to ban fracking. There is an effort to, to do that statewide. If we're going to do that, we need to do that as a people. I think that's the way we should approach that. Uh, our representatives are doing the best they can right now to make sure that we imit, uh, limit the possible impacts to our communities. This is what we need to do, and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce you. That's okay. I'll introduce myself. My name is Mary Brady. I'm with Clean Water Action. I'm here today representing over a quarter of a million Clean Water Action members across the state who have major concerns with under-regulated fracking moving forward in Michigan. Uh, I want to start by applauding uh, Representative Townsend and Representative Barnett uh, and their colleagues for taking leadership on this issue. Um, you may have already uh, seen the new documentary that was released earlier this week, Gasland 2. Uh, this film chronicles the risks and devastating impacts on local communities from the under-regulated and widespread practice of deep horizontal drilling for natural gas, uh, commonly referred to as fracking. Uh, Josh Fox's film gives a microphone to people across the country who have experienced negative impacts of the gas industry running rampant without proper oversight. Impacts like groundwater and surface water contamination, air pollution, and spills. Ultimately, that's why we're all here today. We want to make sure that Michigan is not the star of Gasland 3. Just last weekend, I was up in Kalkaska County, enjoying some of northern Michigan's um, you know, beautiful parts of the state. Uh, when you drive west on Highway 72 in northern Michigan, you are within one half mile, both north and south of that highway, um, from the state's largest fracking operation, the Excelsior Fracking Wells, north and south. We were told these wells would only use five million gallons of water. Combined, these wells ended up using 42 million gallons of water. That water was drained from right beneath our feet, mixed with toxic chemicals, including known carcinogens and neurotoxins, and then injected deep into the ground, never to be used again. The amount of groundwater used to frack these wells in Excelsior Township could fill 63 Olympic-sized uh, swimming pools. One of these wells in Kalkaska County is two miles long, and it holds the state record for the longest well in Michigan. To make matters worse, the horizontal leg of the North Well runs below the Manistee River, one of Michigan's largest and most pristine waterways. Now, just a couple years after those first wells were established, this same corporation in Canna has announced plans for over 500 new well sites in the state of Michigan. This new project will contaminate over 4 billion gallons of fresh water, that's more water than the city of Traverse City uses in two years. I don't know of any other industry that can go to the DEQ and say they're going to contaminate 4 billion gallons of water and get away with it. That's exactly why we are calling for the state legislature to pass this package of bills this year, before this underregulated process destroys entire ecosystems, kills wildlife, and poses a health threat to Michigan citizens and, of course, our Great Lakes. 
We can't afford to get this one wrong. Michigan's economy, natural resources, and Great Lakes way of life are at stake. I'd like to turn things back over to Representative Barnett. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, Jim. Really appreciate you guys coming out today to help us. Um, as my colleagues have talked about and um, our guests here today have talked about, uh, we want to introduce a package of bills that we believe are common sense that everyone can get behind. Public health is not a Democratic or Republican issue. It's a human issue. Water quality should not pit corporations against individuals. And being more transparent means we all can make better and informed decisions. And that's what this package of bills about, is about. First and foremost, we want drilling companies to disclose the chemicals they use in the fracking process. We're not asking for their proprietary mix. We're asking, just tell us what's in it. The public has a right to know what they're putting into our water, and that right to know outweighs the corporate claims of confidentiality involving the use of chemicals. Second, the public and local communities currently have no say in fracking operations in their own communities. Under this package of bills, we would require that public participation in the permitting process be allowed and that local units of governments would have a say in the fracking processes in their own communities. This way, all the facts are known before the permit is issued. All stakeholders, including citizens, have a right to be heard. Another bill would create an advisory committee composed of local governments, industry representatives, environmental group members, and members of the academic community to study and make recommendations about fracking in the state of Michigan. This legislation would increase the distance between fracking operations in residential areas and apply it to schools, hospitals, and daycares in public and public parks. It would require that certain fracking operations test for adverse impacts on our water resources. And if the chemicals associated with fracking are found in nearby groundwater, our legislation would hold those companies liable. We need to make sure that fracking companies are being honest about what they're doing with our land, our water, and our environment. And we can't sacrifice public health so that corporations can make a larger profit. We can't put our rivers, streams, and lakes and some of our most precious resources at risk. So we want to work with legislators on both sides of the aisle to make sure that these laws are passed and that the industry has guidance in how they go about conducting their business. About 11 years ago, at the beginning of this century, Governor Angler signed into law a package of bills that prevented drilling under the Great Lakes. A decade ago. And now we're talking about undoing all of that legislation and allowing unfettered drilling and large-scale fracking operations with unknown consequences to do exactly that across our state. It's unconscionable to me that we wouldn't learn from what's happening in Pennsylvania and Ohio and Colorado and make sure that our citizens and indeed our kids are protected from the dangers of unfettered fracking operations.